Our final uh, session today is going to be on uh, nutrition. Uh, Karen Davison of uh, Purina, that, who has been working with uh, Peaceful Valley Donkey Rescue on uh, donkey specific diets, of which there are very, very few. And hopefully, Purina is coming up with one. Hi, I'm Dr. Karen Davison. I'm Director of Equine Technical Solutions with Purina Animal Nutrition. And uh, today we're going to talk about feed selection and dietary option for donkeys. I do work for Purina Animal Nutrition. I'm a graduate of Texas A&M University where I got both my PhD, well, all, all three degrees at Texas A&M. Um, my family is completely involved in the horse industry. My husband trains horses, both my kids uh, compete professionally. And um, I used to chase cows. I've also chased some cans, um, but I don't ride nearly as much as I used to. Um, but I have worked for Purina for 29 years now. And so that's what I spend a lot of my time doing is talking to um, horse owners about feeding horses. Uh, today, I'm here to talk about donkey nutrition, and in full disclosure, I'm not a donkey nutrition expert, um, but honestly, I'm not sure who is. There are some people who are definitely more experienced at it than I am. Uh, you have your own Dr. Amy McLean, who is uh, very good at, at that information. Um, but I'm going to talk to you a little bit today. I did dig into it pretty deep and tried to find what does the science actually say about feeding donkeys. Um, we're going to talk about some of that and then we're going to go into body condition um, and how that may affect metabolic and endocrine issues that could show up in donkeys. We're going to talk a little bit about some aging issues and then end up with some diet options that might be of interest to you. So when I started digging into what's the science behind feeding donkeys, I went to places I usually go. One is the nutrient requirements of horses, which is as a horse nutritionist, that's our Bible. And in the 2007 version, which is the most recent version, uh, regretfully, I'd sure like to have a new one come out soon, but um, there is a whole section in there about donkeys and other equids and uh, nutrition recommendations there. But um, when you go to good old Dr. Google and you plug in, what should I feed my donkey? Um, there in about half a second, you get 47 million results. So it can get confusing. There might be some information out there. And then I went to a place I like to go, which is Google Scholar, which is where you actually can search for referee science journal articles that um, would have data and statistics and all the things that give us some confidence that the information may be right. And I started out just looking at donkey diet and then realized that apparently donkey milk has some um, properties that may be beneficial. But um, the point is there's not a tremendous amount of science in, on feeding donkeys, but there's some. So I did, uh, did do some digging and here's a summary of what I came up with. So. Um, the information suggests that of 44 million donkeys worldwide, 95% of those are working donkeys. There's very limited research into the nutritional needs of donkeys. Um, but the information that we know so far is that intake rate is slow. Uh, mean retention time of digesta is high. And these are usually the, the low, high, slow, those are usually compared to horses. Um, Digestion coefficients are higher when intake is restricted, but it's lower when they have a lot to eat or ad lib, have plenty to eat. Um, the interesting thing is there's a high volatile fatty acid production in the colon and a very high nitrogen recycling ability. And both of those things combine to give us what we traditionally think of when we think about donkey nutrition is they're very efficient with energy and their protein requirements are lower than other equids. Mineral and vitamin requirements are not established. Uh, we do know that donkeys can manage water deprivation um, more so than horses, and they do rehydrate quickly. But basically, there's not a lot of information to refer to, and finding tables and nutritive values and recommended daily nutrients just doesn't exist for donkeys. 
Um, when you look at the NRC and the nutrition for donkeys and other equids, there's some general recommendations and, and concepts in feeding behavior and apparent digestibility of nutrients. And basically, when you read through the, the highlights that I've got here on this slide, um, what we know is that donkeys presumably evolved in a hot semi-arid environment and they adapted well to that environment. So they're extremely efficient. They're very creative in what they can and will eat when they need to. They can definitely exist on less feed than a horse. Um, and they can utilize more mature, less digestible, more woody type plant material than we typically give horses credit for. Um, they apparently can digest low quality forage similar to a goat and um, they have higher digestibility than ponies or horses and the differences are greater the lower the quality of the forage. Um, mean retention time of something in their digestive tract is about 36 to 37 hours and the microbial cellulolytic activity in the cecum is 13% higher in donkeys than in ponies. Now what that means is that there are, that donkeys must have a different microbiome because so much of those, um, those highlights and that information is related to what microbes are present in the gut that are helping the donkey to digest all this more mature, less digestible um, feedstuffs. So keep that in mind. We're gonna talk a little bit more about microbiome in just a few minutes. But to finish summarizing up the NRC chapter on donkeys, um, they do have a lower resting metabolism than the horse. And they're apparently very good at altering their resting me metabolic rate in response to diet quality. So donkeys are very good at conserving what's available and just kind of slowing their roll, so to speak, to adjust to a low quality or low availability of diet. Um, their protein, again, the ability to recycle urea matches ruminants. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean they don't have amino acid requirements. I think that may be something we're gonna talk about a little bit further is that they may have some fairly low protein requirements and they may be able to exist on low protein, but uh, there may be some places where we just don't know, but we may see better results with a better quality of protein. And then again, they are good at conserving water. Um, they have apparently lower water requirements than other animals except camels. Um, and they definitely drink more in hot temperatures when it's available. So all that's kind of the summary of the science, which most of you probably already were well aware. If you have donkeys, you know they're efficient. You know they don't need exactly the same levels of protein that maybe that we expect in a horse. Um, and that's about, you know, that's about the summary of it. I talked about the microbiome and I got really interested in this when I was looking at that science because again, so much of the differences between horses and donkeys and how they metabolize feed and feedstuffs would point to the idea that they have a different microbiome. And what we know about the equine microbiome is that what you feed that animal definitely affects that. And we know, for instance, that the microbiome of non-domesticated horses are more diverse compared to domesticated horses, um, which again, when they're non-domesticated, they're out eating a variety of plants, whereas a domesticated horse may be, um, may be eating a more consistent diet, put it that way. Um, and that there's a lot of factors on what affects the microbiome of the horse. And I'm assuming that's the case for the donkey as well. So age, how they're housed, dietary composition, veterinary health care, and medication can all affect the microbiome of the animal. So with that, um, I would like to introduce you to the microbiome project, which we call the MQ project. And this is a very large scientific study that Purina is um, running. And we are looking at trying to characterize the microbiome of the equine, and that includes donkeys and mules. Um, so what we have here is we, we are getting samples, and I'll show you how we get those samples. Um, and we are uh, sequencing the DNA, and we're trying to figure out what is the makeup of the microbiome and what kind of things actually affect it. And here's some preliminary data. 
when you look at this chart, every color in each of these bars, every bar is a different body condition score. And in horses that runs from one to nine with one being a very, very skinny horse, nine being a very, very fat horse. And you can see if you look at this, these graphs, if all these colors represent different bugs in the microbiome, you can see that in those middle body condition scores, there's some consistency in the microbiome, in the layout of those graphs. But when you look on either extreme, the really emaciated horse has a very different microbiome than the horse that has a moderate body condition score of five or six. And those are very different than the horses who are obese at the body condition score nine. So we think this is likely due to differences in diet. Uh, really, really skinny horses aren't getting the same diet as really, really fat horses, but there's some potential that maybe some of the fat horses inherently have a different microbiome than horses in a more moderate body condition. So those are some of the things we're trying to figure out with this data. And then we look at this and we know what horses eat, regardless of body condition score. Uh, we know what what they eat affects their microbiome. So you can see that, that animals eating a highly concentrated diet, lots of feed, very little forage um, in the sea there, they have very different microbiome than horses eating hay or pasture. And there's even some differences between like pasture and hay, you know? So again, what the animal eats definitely affects their microbiome. And so when we think about the efficiencies of donkeys, you know, if their microbiome has adjusted to low quality feedstuffs, and maybe that's genetically evolved too, where they just naturally have a higher concentration of cellulolytic bacteria than maybe their horse peers would have. So some of this may have, a com have again, the influence on what donkeys need and how they survive and manage. So the reason, one of the reasons I tell you about that is to actually solicit your help for this study. And you can get um, the microbiome kits. We, we, if you go on our website at purinamills.com and you look for equine microbiome kits, um, you can sign up and you just sign up and you order as many kits as you'd like. Um, we send you an envelope with a kit with, that tells you how to do it and you swab um, the, the rectal area of the animal and so that you get a fecal swab, not when it hits the ground. We don't want samples off the ground because those will be contaminated with microbiome from the ground. But um, you follow the directions you fill in a survey and we definitely would love to have more donkeys and mules. We need more diversity of our equids uh, to really make this project go. So um, consider, uh, if you will, signing up for that, getting a few kits and sending in some samples if you have time. So, So with that, I would like to kind of frame this up because we've kind of talked about with the science, most of the information compares donkeys to horses. And I thought that was interesting as I was preparing for this, uh, this presentation because not all horses have the same nutritional needs. You know, the, the more feral horses, the wild horses um, have, they, they sustain on a different diet than say these really fancy show horses or really high-end performance horses or race horses. Um, the horses in Mongolia or out, in, you know, or maybe uh, have a different management and definitely a different diet than some of the bigger, stronger horses that we produce and, and develop today. So um, no, not all uh, horses don't even have the same nutritional needs. And so then I was looking at, um, there's a nice website Oklahoma State has on listing of donkey breeds. And when you look at all the pictures and the differences in the size and the frame and, and the composition of all these different donkeys, you know, they probably, um, you know, there may be some differences there, but even within donkey breeds. And then we know that they all have different things that they have to do. There's the donkeys that are raised more out in the wild or feral or however, you know, non-domesticated. And then there's domesticated donkeys that are actually doing work and, um, but have very little to eat. 
And then there's our domesticated donkeys that are sometimes actually athletes and, and show animals and, and are exercising and, and doing different types of work than just um, uh, being beasts of burden. So I think, again, not only do donkeys maybe have different nutritional needs than horses, I think they also don't all have the same nutritional needs just because they're donkeys. I don't think they're all exactly the same. One of the things that is for sure is that obesity is the biggest challenge facing non-working donkeys in temperate areas around the world where food's abundant. Again, donkeys, are, they just evolved to be very efficient. And when they don't have to be, uh, they are, they, they, they still store a lot. So we have this obesity concern for our domesticated donkeys. And then emaciation is the biggest problem facing donkeys in tropical areas where food is scarce and of poor quality and they're, when they're required to work. So I think again, that proves my point that not all donkeys have the same requirements, but then also they, they may not all can handle the same food stuff. So obesity is defined as excessive body fat content sufficient to cause impairment to health or bodily function. And the big issue is that it's been associated with development of insulin resistance and pro-inflammatory state in both man and equids, and that includes donkeys. Um, so if you're trying to determine if your donkey is fat, there are some tools and techniques. Uh, there's body condition scoring, crusty neck scoring. Uh, weight tape is a good tool. If you don't have a scale that you can weigh your donkey on, a weight tape is helpful in monitoring body weight. Um, and then a feed hay or scale where you actually weigh up their feed and hay to make sure that you're feeding, you're not overfeeding them. And then that exercise. And there is this uh, fight between diet and exercise as to which helps lose weight the most. And uh, the science would tell us that diet probably helps in weight loss the most, but re regular exercise helps with maintenance of that weight loss. So it's um, not necessarily an adversarial thing, but maybe we use diet and exercise together where we can. So when we body condition score horses, as I mentioned earlier, it goes from one to nine in the Henneke scale. Um, whereas in donkeys, the scale is running from one to five. The scale I've seen published and illustrated the most runs from a one to a five. And I would encourage you, if you're a donkey owner and lover, that you get really uh, adept at body condition scoring, which means not only do you look at the differences, but you also get used to putting your hands on them and feeling their rib cover, feeling how thick and their crusty neck may have gotten, all those things. And when they're in that fat or obese range, they, they are not in a healthy place. So do your best to try to manage their diet and their exercise to keep them in that more ideal body condition score three range. And the reason this is so important is because there's this overlap with obesity and endocrine problems like PPID, which is Cushing's, um, which aging donkeys do get Cushing's or PPID. And then insulin dysregulation, which is the newer terminology to use for what we have traditionally called insulin resistance. But there is this, this trifecta here of if you have an obese, um, PPID positive, insulin resistant positive animal, they're at extremely high risk for laminitis. And I promise you avoiding laminitis is much easier than dealing with laminitis. So we want to keep our donkeys out of this middle range and actually out of these other shady areas as well. So the, the more overlap you have, the more critical it is that you take uh, action to try to minimize that risk. Um, this is another uh, explanation of the risks for laminitis, and it actually is a genetic and an environment uh, factor combination. And uh, in horses, we go through all four of these, but typically I would say that donkeys will probably stay over here in the B and the D graphics where there are genetic risk alleles, meaning that genetically donkeys are efficient with calories. And so it's probably hard to get a donkey to a low risk because they just have the genetics for it. But if you control calorie intake and they are working or get regular exercise, the risk is mitigated. 
but if they are getting uh, you know, excessive calories, they're not exercising, and you have other environmental risk factors, they're definitely at a high risk for, for laminitis. And again, when we think about comparing donkeys to horses, I think about this situation where we have Welsh and Dartmoor ponies who, if you think about them being raised um, in a more natural or uh, state, I guess, in the wild or, or at least in their native environment, they may not be wild, but they are not, um, definitely not pampered pets. They're out more on the range or um, maintained again in, in more of their native environment. That little pony on the top there is probably at a very low risk for laminitis, metabolic syndrome, any of those endocrine issues. Um, but you take one of his peers that is maintained in a, a more confined area or, or more managed area with good quality feedstuffs and plenty of it. And you begin to see the cresty neck, the fat, um, all those things make this horse at a bigger risk for laminitis than the one at the above. So I think you could actually uh, superimpose donkey pictures on top of this. The donkeys who are out in their more uh, natural state, possibly um, much less risk for endocrine disorders than those who um, are blessed with good, um, adequate and available feed and forage. So where do we start to try to maintain these? If we have a donkey that's carrying a little bit too much weight, um, reducing calories, all sources. It's you know not just about not giving them any feed. It's also about managing their hay intake or their forage intake if it's hay or pasture. Um, an example is this: is in obese pony mares. If they were just uh, if they were over, basically if they were getting in that obese range, if you took what they were currently eating and you cut it by 25% for six weeks, they lost weight and their baseline insulin declined by 75%, which is a big, big change. So um, diet and exercise will certainly help. Um, restricting starch and sugar is helpful. Using many meals, especially if they are laminitic or have insulin resistance is a good idea. But again, and we know with our donkeys um, that we have to be careful about the speed with which we uh, cause the weight loss. And so that's why this slide says slow and steady, is you restrict slowly so that over time you lose weight and that you're losing body fat. And what the graph on this, this slide shows you is that the insulin levels decline over time as you lose body fat. So you do improve insulin sensitivity by getting them to lose the body fat. The interesting thing about this particular study was that the um, activity level, as they lost weight and the longer they were on the diet, um, the time they spent at play increased and the time they spent at rest um, actually increased, but the amount of time they spent feeding decreased. So that was helpful. So if you're managing donkeys in, in a confinement or in a controlled setting, I would just encourage you to be prepared to weigh everything. A luggage scale or a fish scale is a really important management tool to have around the barn. And just don't start throwing hay out all the time. Ad lib, just weigh it, feed a prescribed amount. Consider using grazing muzzles. Horses don't like them. I'm sure donkeys don't like them. But the way that, unless you keep them on a large dry lot for some of these donkeys, it's the only way to help manage them into a more uh, moderate body condition. Make sure the muzzles fit properly. There's lots of different styles and just check them off and don't put them on and just leave them, but make sure they're not rubbing and that they're, they're soft and uh, the donkeys as comfortable as possible. You really do need to manage the hay as well. Um, choose a more moderate to lower quality hay, uh, feed them a minimum of one pound per hundred pounds of body weight, um, but weigh that hay so they don't overeat. You may need to test the hay if you do have a, a problematic donkey that you know is a ticking time bomb, and you may want to soak it uh, if they have insulin resistance. 
So keeping the starch and sugar level of that hay, feeding a hay that tested a lower relative feed value would all be beneficial to help reduce and control the calories in those donkeys. And then instead of having you know, all the hay they can eat in front of them all the time, just slow intake. There's lots of creative ways to try to get them to graze and pick and, and eat a little more slowly. And that would all be helpful management. And exercise is an option and it doesn't take a lot. And I know you may have to be creative. I've seen lots of different games that people play with their donkeys, driving donkeys, uh, lunging them, uh, going on long walks, getting exercise along with your donkey. But exercise is really, really helpful when obesity or metabolic endocrine type issues are the concern. The other thing we'd like to talk about is, is that seniors, donkeys can live longer than horses. And so particularly in captivity or in our rescue situations or in just our own um, donkey ownership situations, we take good care of them. We don't let them founder, all those things. They can live a really long time. And you do get some signs of aging such as but they begin to have a decrease in body condition. They did begin to not maintain muscle mass as well. And then dentition, their teeth quality and ability to chew and digest long stem forage can begin to decline. And they can have some immune function challenges. You know, just the older they are, the less uh, adept their immune function is to fighting off things and for even responding to vaccine, we know that. And they can have some issues with inflammation that affects uh, joint mobility and such. So those are all signs of aging in horses and they also are signs of aging in donkeys. So some feeding options that we've found over time that may be useful and may be worth your consideration um, for donkeys and any really efficient equid, um, Ration balancers are awesome. I consider ration balancers nutrition for animals that don't need feed. So for horses and donkeys that don't need feed, if they stay fat enough on hay or pasture alone, and they don't need additional calories that you would get from a feed, ration balancers are your friend. They're concentrated nutrition. They have very low feeding rates, so they provide very few additional calories. The challenge for some of us though, is to get past this concentrated nutrition. And so one of the ration balancers, or uh, there's a lot of ration balancers that, that will be in this 30 to 32% protein range. And when I started out, I told you donkeys can survive and do well on lower protein than horses. Um, you would think, well, she's a crazy person for recommending 32% protein to donkeys. But when you consider the very low feeding rates, um, the amount of additional protein provided by uh, a 32% protein ration balancer is negligible compared to the amount of protein they get out of the six pounds of hay or so, say for a 400 pound donkey. So, and this is hay that's at 8% protein. So to provide the calories that they need in a moderate protein level, what this 32% protein, again, it's very concentrated. So very little of it goes a long way. They don't need a bunch. Um, but it gives, it's concentrated protein, vitamins, and minerals so that you support lean tissue in your donkey, not fat tissue, but lean tissue like muscle, hair, hooves, skin, all those things. Um, so Enrich Plus is one of the options we have. And then uh, unique to Purina is the Omega Max ration balancer. And it is fed at twice the feeding rate as the Enrich Plus. Um, and you can see in this table too, though, that the amount of protein provided, um, say in this example for a 400 pound donkey, um, compared to the amount that would be provided in the hay. And you may notice here that because the Omega Match is fed at twice the amount as the Enrich Plus, I actually reduced the hay slightly so that the end result at the end of the day, whether you feed Omega Match in grass hay, or in Rich Plus in the same grass hay, the total calories are very similar and um, the donkey will be getting really nice balanced nutrition without excessive amounts of anything. So to tell you a little bit more about the Omega Match, it was designed to try to give horses and donkeys um, more of the nutrition that they would get out of green pasture 
without the excessive calories and sometimes the excessive sugar, which we worry about for our metabolic um, animals. So they, horses naturally get omegas out of grass and plants. Um, their typical diet for a horse is the fats 50% omega-3s, um, which when you cut that grass and make hay, uh, the omegas dissipate very quickly. So hay um, doesn't have as much omega-3 level as uh, green pasture would have. And the ratio in hay is somewhere around a two to four omega-3 to six ratio. Um, and even though there's no established requirement for omega-3s, meaning we haven't really found a deficiency in horses, we do know that if you have more omega-6s in a diet than threes, or if you don't have adequate omega-3s, um, animals under stress and infl inflammatory situations like obesity or PPID, um, they may struggle a little bit more. So that's why we developed this Omega Match Ration Balancer would be to give a lot of the goodness that you find in green pasture for animals that don't have access or can't have access to green pasture for various reasons. So there's a lot of goodness in that bag of Omega Match, including the Omega 3 to 6 ratio that matches pasture. Um, there's natural vitamin E, there's a good uh, quality amino acids, biotin for hoof quality. There's a therapeutic level of biotin, so it replaces hoof supplements as well. It has gastric support and it's balanced in complete nutrition. And so I tell you all about that because it is a program that I've been using uh, in with, our, with some customers that are feeding donkeys and we're having some pretty good results. Um, so I do also want to share there are options for donkeys that are unable to chew or digest long stemmed hay, um, specifically our older donkeys, most likely that or, or you may have a rescue donkey that for whatever reason has some dent dental issues that make it hard for them to chew or digest long stemmed hay. We still need to make sure they get their fiber requirement met, which is a minimum of one pound per hundred pounds of body weight of some fiber that can actually effectively replace hay. So if they can't eat hay, you have to provide that in other ways, which may include what we would call a complete feed, which for uh, Purina, our definition is that it has adequate types and amounts of fibers to effectively replace hay. It may be a pelleted feed, but it is if formulated with specific fibers to replace hay. Then you can also use hay pellets or chopped hay some people like beet pulp shreds. For some donkeys, they may have too many calories. They have higher calories than hay um, and they don't have enough indigestible fibers. So beet pulp shreds would be too high quality fiber to completely replace hay for your donkey, but it could be used if you have a hard keeper senior donkey, you could use some beet pulp. Um, there are soaked cubes that you could use. It's important when you use some of these hay replacement options that you feed by weight and um, just because it comes out of a feed bag doesn't mean it's feed. You do have to feed it like hay. And so I give this example here where a typical three quart scoop from a feed store, um, it'll weigh three to four pounds of pellets, depending on the pellets, and it'll replace the fiber in three to six pounds of a flake of hay. So um, you can basically, you know, if you were to feed a donkey half a flake twice a day, you could feed him half a scoop twice a day of the a complete feed. And for older donkeys, a senior type complete feed might be helpful. Um, and then we also have this impact hay stretcher, which I'm going to tell you a little bit more about as well. Um, we have been using the impact hay stretcher and the Omega Match ration balancer in a blend where you use four parts impact hay stretcher to one part Omega Match. And it makes a really nice base diet for donkeys who are in dry lots who don't maybe get green pasture, they're just on hay or they can't eat hay. And in this blend, we get a nice combination where you get, the, get some uh, basically moderate protein, moderate in calories, but you can feed enough of it to replace the fiber in hay if you need to, or you can feed it along with hay and it still has enough nutrition to support that lean tissue without overdoing the calories. So if you're looking for something for your confined donkeys um, that maybe can't eat hay, or you may be still feeding a little bit of hay, but you're just looking for a nice, really moderate 
calorie, low in starch and sugar um, program, this is a really nice option. And one, again, that we've, we've been trying at various, um, we, we've used it, Peaceful Valley Donkey Rescue. I've used it with some other customers as well and I'm seeing pretty good results. So just an option for you to think about as you're looking for ways to, to better feed your donkeys. So I hope you found a little nugget in there or some information that might be useful to you and um, that will help you better take care of our friends, the donkeys. Thank you for your time.